Hello, good evening and welcome to Spotlight. My name is Nuong Falong. Today on Spotlight, we are curious about the workings of the Ghana Commodity Exchange beyond the buying and selling of listed commodities. We have questions for this relatively new establishment. And who better to answer those questions than the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Commodities Exchange, Mrs. Tuchi Ivoi. Hello. Welcome Hi, to Spotlight. Thank you for having me. How do you come to be the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Commodity Exchange? Well, the exchange was inaugurated in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, back in 2017, I was still working with Nestle Central and West Africa region. Okay. Um, I had met various people um, in public sector. Also, I've worked a lot in private sector. And we got talking about some of the challenges that face the market. When it became apparent that the government um, wanted to set up a, a commodity exchange, they looked for people who had different types of experiences and they brought okay. us together, asked us to see what we could do um, to really make this happen. You may have heard that a commodity exchange has been in discussion for even many over 20 years, years many, yes. many years. Um, successive people and governments have tried to do um, something about it, but with the onset of this current government, they said, look, We've talked enough, let's get this exchange up and mm. running because mm. we think it's going to be something very beneficial for the country. So I came in, the current um, Chief Operations Officer also came in. He was actually the project manager when the exchange was launched as a project in 2015. Okay. During that period, a lot of feasibility studies were done, really looking at the design of the exchange, what would be needed to put in, um, which types of commodities, which types of market actors. So a lot of work was done. Um, so he came in and then the um, first chief executive officer, he had experience um, with commodity exchanges, having worked in the Ethiopian commodity exchange and then in Rwanda, okay. um, mm -hmm. the East African mm -hmm. exchange. My background is in um, food. I worked for more than 15 years with Nestle and for okay. many of those years, more than 10 of those years, I was um, handling the coffee business and then I moved on to cocoa. So I have a lot of um, yeah. background. So it's, in, yeah. But the, it's diverse people the, the within diverse here. Diverse people. The yeah. COO was with the Securities and Exchange Commission before he um, came on as a project manager and okay. currently the COO. So we all came together with our different um, backgrounds to see how we could really get this exchange up and running. Um, that was at the beginning of 2018. We are under the Ministry of Finance, work also very closely with the Ministry of Food and Agriculture and the Ministry of Trade, and we basically got this. I was just wondering that because between the Ministry of Trade, Ministry of Food and Agriculture, what did you study in school? Political science and French, and then I have an executive MBA. I've worked okay. many years in marketing and general business management. So with Nestle, I've played different roles such as managing director, business units, um, director, and so on. Yeah. So was it easy to transition from Nestle into the commodity exchange? Um, I'd say that the type of product knowledge and um, expertise I have is really end-to-end. -end. So when you're handling a business unit there, you're looking from farm, what we say from farm to cup in mm -hmm. the case of coffee. Mm -hmm. So literally looking at the beans um, being produced, processed into the cup, the final cup that we drink today, including the marketing, the branding and all the elements. So it's really um, end to end. Um, so yes, I understand commodity value chains very well. What we're doing here at the Ghana Commodity Exchange is going back, almost back to where it starts, which is a production. The exchange doesn't handle production. MOFA is doing a, a fantastic job with the Planting for Food and Jobs mm, program, mm. this flagship program in ensuring that we can improve the quality and quantity of production. Then the exchange comes in at post-production to make sure that we can offer services such as good storage, quality management, um, insurance on these commodities, and then help provide access to markets for these commodities. Good storage, quality mm -hmm. management, mm -hmm. market. And markets. Um, are these the core problems that the GCX was seeking? To, to solve. Uh, absolutely amongst the core problems. The other one is also access to finance. So if we talk first about quality um, and, and, and storage, you'll hear a lot about post-harvest losses usually when you're talking about you know agricultural mm -hmm. commodities. Mm -hmm. Once the commodities are produced, a lot of them go to waste simply because they don't have you know somewhere to store them to preserve the quality before they get a market for them. 
when a commodity comes into one of our warehouses, we store it under the right conditions. So you can go from having a product, let's say maize, which may suffer from 40% post-harvest losses. When it's in our warehouse, it's actually, um, we say 1.5% maximum loss. Mm, mm, it's actually mm, less than that. Which is because reduced. it's preserved in the right conditions, it's treated and so on. We also insure these commodities. So we insure the warehouse, the physical structure, but we also insure the physical commodity. So if there should be any degradation, we have performance bonds which can be drawn on them. Drawn uh, uh, on them. So basically, your commodities are safe um, when they come to the warehouse as a seller. As a buyer, it's also safe because you're guaranteed what you buy. If you're looking for 100 bags of maize, of grade one maize, you're guaranteed to get that. And that is the role the exchange plays. Mm. So this mm. is when we talk about quality. How do um, you preserve them? How do we? Well, each commodity has its own um, preservation. Life, yeah. yeah. Um, we've started with food security crops, grains. Um, we started with maize. We started with one commodity. And then we keep adding one as we go along. How many do you have now? Currently, we have maize, soybean, sorghum, sesame, and we recently added rice. Mm. So, you know, mm. they have similar... No cashew yet? I saw some... No, not yet. Oh, We're working on that. We recently held um, an auction, what we call a, an auction, for cashew, we wanted to try and introduce it into mm, the market. Mm, mm. So that's it's a slightly different um, method of trade. Yeah. Is how does it solve the problem of finance here? Okay, so we just talked about quality. We haven't even talked about the markets part. Mm. So once you have a good quality commodity, you start to have buyers who are interested in in off taking this commodity. We started with the local market. We said let's you know make sure we can. Um, solve challenges in Ghana first, provide access to markets within Ghana, which is why we started with food security products. But as we start to move on to cash crops like cashew, you'll start to get international buyers. Mm. They want to know they're going to get good quality mm. commodity, which Especially is standard. cocoa. Yes. And, uh, yeah, mm. which is standardized. If you go to the open market today, you can buy maize, but you're not going to buy grade one or grade two, grade three. Maize is maize, mm, mm. Just, you know, regardless of the quality, you'll pay the same price. Here, they know that they're going to get... So there's a consistent there's quality a, here. Yeah. Is it because you, you seek that quality to, to store? I mean, that's what you source into this place. Or how do you even get the farmers to... Um, it's two things. We Because we, when we talk about standardization, it means we have a range of, um, let's say, quality parameters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can bring in as long as it passes the minimum requirements quality requirements it can come in but it doesn't mean it has to be a grade one it could also be okay. a grade four okay some buyers are looking for grade four mm. if you're selling a grade one you will get a premium mm. Um, mm. price for mm. your grade one versus a grade four mm. if you sell grade one in the market it's the same price regardless of the quality right so when it comes in we do grading and certifying of these commodities if it falls below the um, the standard, we will not take it. There are some commodities that may come in that can just about enter um, into you know the minimum requirements, but they need some extra treatment. So our warehouses provide extra services such as cleaning of commodities, drying of commodities. So if it comes mm, in with a mm. too high moisture level, for instance, we can dry it, mm. then it will meet the minimum requirements and then it can be stored and then traded. So you asked about the farmers. Mm. We um, we have officers in the field. We call them aggregation and farmer support officers. So mm. they go to the when farms. you say the field, which areas are these? So currently, we are have a, we we have ten warehouses: Bronga, Hafo, Ashanti, and then the northern regions of Ghana. Mm. So wherever our warehouse is located, they go to the farms in those communities and just you know talk about our services, educate about some of these. Um, post-harvest management techniques and so on, and then encourage them to bring their commodities to us. And then when they come, we give them further um, education. What's the advantage for a farmer, if I'm a farmer, for example, and I probably farm maize? I see you mentioned grade one, uh, you can get a standardized here, but what if I have grade one? Mm -hmm. Do I stand a ch better chance of getting a better uh, prize here than on the market is there how do you fix that mechanism because i could say okay maybe if i go onto the open market i can get a few cds higher does that work if you go onto the open market you will get whatever price is prevalent on the market, on the market mm. that day 
regardless of the quality. So whether it's grade one or grade four, you'll get the same price. Mm. Here, people are actually buying graded commodity or standardized mm. commodity. Mm. So they would usually pay higher for higher quality commodity. So if um, a Nestle or a Unilever or a flour mills um, or a Yedon wants to buy, you know, higher quality maize, they can say, I'm specifying I want a grade one yes, and I'll pay a bit higher for grade one than I will for a grade four because they're buying these products for, you know, food. Mm. Some people are buying maize for chicken feed, for example, for poultry feed. Others are buying it to mm. process into baby mm. food. Mm. So you're looking mm. for different quality. So it's not to say um, only grade one is good. It depends on what you're looking for. But if you're looking for human consumption, you definitely want a higher quality commodity. And these companies are prepared to pay more for that quality commodity. So that's the difference between, you know, buying it or selling it on the exchange versus selling it on the open market. Does it move faster though? No, um, it, it doesn't move faster in the sense that we only have 10 warehouses today. Mm, As you mentioned mm. at the beginning, we're still in the very early stages. Mm -hmm. We can only um, trade so much volume with the current capacity we have. We don't say that the exchange also um, comes to replace the open market. It's a market. It's mm -hmm. a marketplace. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as with every marketplace all over the world, you will have different markets, um, you know, which you can tap into. So it seems you're going to need is, more warehouses eventually. We will be needing more warehouses eventually, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we deliberately started small because we wanted to make sure that if we have one warehouse, it works. Mm -hmm. before, before you, you bring add more and another and another. Otherwise, it, it can be very complicated. When, where do you find your market? Who is coming? to buy these commodities is it are these foreigners or are they locals currently local or Ghanaian um, well mostly Ghanaian in the last um, in the last six to eight months we've seen a few coming from Burkina Faso you will hear a lot about um, you know cross-border trading you'll hear that you have buyers coming from these um, countries the exchange has been established to be able to trade with you know buyers from all over the world our focus was to start in Ghana. We're still in that phase. Um, the next phase will be to encourage, you know, regional trading, where we have um, regional traders interested today to come. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. the doors are open for them because we want to provide as, you know, much access to markets for our farmers as possible. And then eventually, yes, global global trade. This seems um, pretty similar with the activities of the Ghana Stock Exchange. Are there any differences? Yeah, I mean, the main difference will be the types <laughs> of things product. that are being traded, yes. the product, exactly, mm -hmm. where they're trading stocks, we're facilitating the trade of commodities, and we've started with agricultural commodities. Later on, somewhere down the line, we may, um, well, we, we intend to add other types of commodities, metals, minerals, and so on. Let me go back to the farmer. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm a farmer and I want to list on the GCX, um, do I need any specific technical knowledge? Because a lot of farmers are not technical. Or is that handled completely by the GCX? So I just come to you with my produce. Yeah, you come with your produce and we'll advise. So when you come, we can you know, tell you the type of quality that you've brought and the types of um, techniques you can use to improve on your quality. Generally, you'll find that a lot of uh, most of our farmers can produce, you know, within that spectrum, at mm, least up to mm. grade four. What we do is show them the value they'll get in improving the quality to make it a grade one to get that extra premium on pricing. So that's a little bit the intervention that we, we make. Mm. I, I asked earlier about the financial aspect. Right. How does it solve the problem of finance for the regular Ghanaian farmer? So today, the regular Ghanaian farmer wants, first, they want good pricing mm -hmm. for their commodity. Mm -hmm. So that we've covered when we talk mm -hmm. about standardization mm -hmm. and getting better pricing for higher quality. But there's also, I mean, it's a fact, you know, we need money to eat today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So somebody goes to the farm, they want to buy the commodity. Normally, they'll pay them yeah, and take the take commodity. It, yeah. But in most cases, you'll find that buyers go, they take it, they say they'll come and pay later. Mm. In some cases, they don't come back with the mm. farmer's money. That's money lost. Or you follow them for a long time. Or you chase mm -hmm. and chase. And honestly, you're lucky if you get the money. One, Number two, when you do get the money, it's not necessarily the price that you're looking for. Mm. So they're often getting cheated at farm gates. They're getting lower prices, but they're also not weighing the product. When we talked about standardization, weighing is part of it. Mm. So you'll see that a bag, 
is not properly weighed or the weights are not, if there are weights, they're not calibrated properly. So instead of selling, let's say, 50 kilos, the farmer might be giving 60, 70 kilos away for the price of less than 50 mm, kilos. Mm, that's mm, also money mm. that they've lost. So these are all things that the exchange helps with. When a farmer deposits their commodity in our warehouse, they're issued with an electronic warehouse receipt. Okay. This um, will give them the title to the commodity, how much they've brought in, what grade it is. It's all documented. Mm. If you bring your commodity, you know, maybe I should start by saying that you have to be a member to trade through the exchange. So even the farmers who are okay. trading through so the exchange. So you have to register as a member mm -hmm. of the exchange. Yeah. Is that at, at a fee or is it? It is. Okay. So I'll, I'll talk mm. to you about that afterwards. So they come, um, they get their warehouse receipts. They may not want to sell the commodity straight away because they know that in two or three months, the prices Price will might appreciate. Increase, yeah. So they'd rather sell it then. But at the same time, they need the money today mm. to cater to, you know, for their daily needs or maybe even to start preparing for the next season. So what the warehouse receipt financing product does, it allows a bank to take this warehouse receipt from the farmer. The farmer can use this as sole collateral. So now they don't need to provide or show a house or a car to be able to get a loan from a bank. Okay. The bank is happy enough with the mm -hmm. warehouse receipt mm -hmm. because they know that the goods are in the safe possession of the Ghana Commodity Exchange those goods, the quality and the quantity are guaranteed by the exchange. So just on the back of this uh, warehouse receipt, a farmer can get a loan from the bank, you know, do mm, his... It depends um, on how much product they've brought in anyway. Do his daily okay. business. And then when they sell the commodity at a later stage, they make their money, they pay back the bank, but they still make more than if they mm. had um, sold it earlier. Because okay. commodity okay. trading is seasonal, or, or let's say pricing is seasonal. On, on so there's a negotiated trades. price there. The, mm. So mm. the negotiation, and I'm really glad you used that word. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, how are prices set? Does the exchange set prices? We say no, the exchange doesn't set prices. We are literally a marketplace that brings buyers and sellers together. Okay, okay. It's an open market. Um, the sellers will um, put in their sell price um, and the buyers will put in the price at which they want to buy. And when there's a match between the sell price and the buy price, a, a, a trade is, is made. Mm -hmm. So it's the farmers. The only thing I would say is that, again, pricing is seasonal. So usually there's a range. Okay. So if in November, this is the price range, December, in December January, price February, and so on. So there are price ranges, um, but the farmer then knowing what the price ranges are will determine their price and the, the, the price they're willing to take within that range and a buyer will also um, share the price they're willing to buy for a particular quality it seems like uh there's quite a bit of human interaction there uh where the farmer brings the produce and you know gets a receipt for it i know you haven't gone far into other markets yet mm. uh you mentioned burkina also coming in but did COVID impact this in any way? The transactions, the yes. you know, yes. sourcing of product? Absolutely. Was it a, a good impact or a bad a impact? A bad impact. I mean, first of all, you know, here we're here in Accra. Mm. And in Accra, it was one of the lockdown cities, mm -hmm. Accra, mm -hmm. Kumasi. But the other areas were relatively, mm -hmm. um, the numbers were down. There was no lockdown. However, there was a lot of unease. There was a lot of uncertainty, mm -hmm. insecurity. So farmers, should I bring my products to the warehouse do i have to store it because what if there's no food tomorrow so yes we definitely saw a decline in deposits coming mm -hmm. to the warehouse and even um trading well that also impacted on trading operations we have a trading floor when we first opened the exchange you, you know we encouraged members to come here and trade on you mm -hmm. know, from our, our computers over here but with the advent of lockdown we activated remote trading so you can trade from wherever you are as long as you're a member you have your password and so on however because of all these dynamics trading activity was very very low for many months i mean there were barely any um, there was barely any activity and then we started to see things start up again mm, around mm, august of mm, last year mm. So yeah, COVID had um, you know a, a negative impact on on the exchange as it did with many other industries. We are in a period now where um, you know farming activity has kind of resumed again um, full time, and people are looking for opportunities. Farmers are looking for markets, 
and buyers are looking for quality commodity. So it's, it's, a, it's definitely a much better time now. I think from our side, we need to start to see how we can scale up so that we can provide some of those opportunities uh, to a larger market. Is the local market enough uh, in the sense that you're getting demand every day enough to absorb whatever quantities are being brought to you? Again, we do not have currently the kind of capacity that um, we can call enough. Mm, I mean, with mm. 10 warehouses with an average capacity of a thousand metric tons, there's only so much that we can currently provide. Hold, yeah. What is good is that people are starting to um, understand the benefits of what the exchange has to offer and more and more people are coming to ask for you know, the provision of services. What that does is it is encourages us to kind of move a bit faster mm, and scale mm, up mm, faster. Mm. Again, we were very deliberate by, you know, starting slowly. You'll see that a lot of um, organizations or initiatives will come, launch with a lot of noise and then, you know, mm, things mm, die mm, down. Mm. We've tried to do the opposite and trying to build this thing gradually. So the feedback we're getting from the markets is very, very positive and that allows us to then continue to you know, do you ever get more uh, requests than you're able to meet? We get more requests than we're able to meet in the sense that, you know, this question you asked about, you know, the Ghanaian market, the foreign market, mm -hmm. we get, you know, foreign markets calling us almost weekly now. Mm. Um, can they buy cashew from the exchange? That's why we started to accelerate the cashew auction. The cashew, okay. Exactly. Um, and, and this is happening now on a more frequent basis. As people hear that there is um, the existence of a commodity exchange, they want to know what they can purchase through us. So yes, this is starting to happen. So, so there's presently a need for more cashew farmers? Cashew farmers, there's a need to improve the value chain. I okay. mean, recently you, you'll hear a lot of talk about um, cashew here. People say it's um, rich man's uh, <laughs> yeah. food, poor man's yeah. crop, yeah. because see. a lot of the value is, you know, taken outside. Oh, right. mm. I think that the, there are sufficient volumes. Ghana's producing very high quality commodities cashew. across board. Cashew, the grains, um, rice. rice, I mean, cocoa, we're amongst the highest quality in the world. So there's a very strong potential. I think the trick is in finding, you know, the right markets, those who are willing to pay, you know, the, the, right, the price right price to for, the farmers for, the right, for their commodity. And, and yes, we, we have a, a role to play in that, but we're not alone. I mean, there are so many different actors in the value chain that have different roles to play. Um, but we, we like to think that we will be working together to improve the value chain across board for, for farmers. How, how do you get the buys? Do you advertise? So, again... <laughs> or, or they just come to you, yeah, yeah. No, again, they just find you. No, no, honestly, I'd say that we, we haven't done enough when it comes to awareness creation, but mm. we're also cognizant of the fact that we cannot handle, you know, too, too much, much demand. Yeah, there's a boom so in the demand. Even. So, you know, it, it's a fine balance between mm. how much we go out and, 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 and advertise the, the, the product, mm. the service, mm. and how much we can... We wouldn't want to go so far and so fast and then we're not able to satisfy the market. You have physical outlets, or this is all online. If someone, you know, if the local population, for example, not everyone is that tech here. Mm -hmm. Ghanaians usually want to come, you know, physically and take the product and give you the cash. Do you operate online or do you have physical outlets? Online. So the only physical outlet are the warehouses where the commodities are mm -hmm. stored. So once the buyer, um, you know, makes the payment, the transaction is closed, the buyer goes um, or, you know, sends a truck to the warehouse to pick up the physical commodity. But all the trading activity is happening online. Um, what is very exciting is that many farmers are actually, you know, selling their commodities online. People always ask, you know, is this thing so complicated? Is it really welcoming to farmers? Mm. But I can tell you that 90% of the members who are currently active and trading on the platform are farmers, and some of them are smallholder farmers. So you see that the, some of the older farmers have, um, you know, asked their children who are either, you know, young yeah, yeah. or, you know, or more, techy. more techy, newly in business. They are the ones who are handling the trading activities. So this is really um, when we talk about bringing youth into agriculture, mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. agriculture attractive, showing the business side to agriculture, the exchange is one of the opportunities. Yeah. Now, is there um, an opportunity here that you spot for, let's say, the African continental free trade area? Are there any opportunities that presents to the GCX? 
Yes, I think, you know, the African continental free trade um, area is there to assist in the trade of goods and services mm -hmm. across board. Mm -hmm. Every good, every service that can be, you know, traded across the, uh, the continent is, is there. We are specializing in adding value to commodities and facilitating the trade of commodities. So when it comes to the commodity trade, that's where GCX can play a role. Um, as you've um, rightly mentioned, our systems are all, you know, electronic. We can link up with commodity exchanges all over the world. Transactions can be done within seconds. Mm. Um, so yes, we 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 actually there to 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 facilitate that and to play our role. Yeah. Um, in what areas do these opportunities present themselves? I mean, besides the technological aspect, mm -hmm. what is it? The increase in the market, perhaps? What what specific areas is is it going to take advantage of? Okay, you mean just different types of opportunities? Mm -hmm. um, yes, many. I, I just mentioned people sending trucks to pick their commodities. Mm -hmm. So you have the whole um, transportation, haulage services mm -hmm. will start to increase. Mm -hmm. You mentioned technology, there's the online computer, but there are also apps, phone apps. One thing um, that we do at the end of every trading day is we send the price information to all the farmers, all the members of GCX. Mm. So they'll know what prices um, the commodities were traded at, the closing prices mm, for mm, the day mm. and by for grade, each, commodity. For each commodity that was traded. So, and this we're sending via SMS, you know, blast to all our members. Um, we plan in the future to do things like instant voice recording so that mm. they don't even necessarily have to read text they can they hear can that listen information to in it. local languages today they're trading online and they go you know kind of an internet platform we're looking at building apps to make trading even quicker i can tell you trading is it's very very fast and it's um it's so easy i mean once you come as a member you're trained by the team and you're able to trade. It's it's very simple, but now we want to make it even simpler. Have a phone app where mm, you can use mm. not even. Um, I was wondering because yeah, it sounds like a good opportunity yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. You so know, so you just go into the GCX app, for example, and you know you can as just long as you remember. see everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, as yes. long as you remember. Yes. But these messages you send out to farmers so is mm. local language. These messages are text messages, which has the commodity and the price. In what language? The grade. It's it's English. I mean, it says okay. maize. They know maize. Okay. There's no farmer in Ghana, wherever they are, that doesn't know <laughs> Some of them don't speak English. No, they don't, but they know maize mm. because they're producing it. But my point is that this is the next step when mm. we do the instant voice mm. recording that will mm. be in local languages mm. to make mm. it even friendlier, the hearing the voice and so on. So these are all things that we're planning to add on. Um, other types of um, opportunities, brokerage. I mean, you know, this is a new establishment. I've mentioned that it's membership based. You can come on as a trading member, mm -hmm, as a brokering mm -hmm, member. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so these are different people can form brokerage companies. People can come on as traders, as brokers. These are new job opportunities altogether. Um, then there's the exchange itself. We're bringing in a lot of youth who are coming in. Some are coming on internships, getting okay. you know, a, a lot of training and then get to stay on in, in jobs. So there are lots and lots of opportunities that are being created outside of that. Are there any problems? Are you a farmer? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's another opportunity. As we right. to see, like I was saying, the business case, people realize that, yes, farming is a business. I yeah, and a lot of young people are doing absolutely, farming now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what challenges have you encountered so far? I see the warehouses are a challenge. Mm -hmm. but the warehouses are a challenge. The awareness creation is a challenge. Um, when the majority of the population are somehow engaged in the farming business and you cannot reach them. You ask me, how do you reach people? Mm -hmm. To be able to reach a million farmers is a lot of work, a lot of investment, um, and you can't go once. I, I mean, we're having this extensive discussion today, but I'm sure even after that, you'd still have more questions. You'd have to come see the warehouse, um, how it really operates, maybe try your hand at the trade to really get a, a good feel of it. So we can't just go once and say, hey, we have a commodity exchange. These are the products and services. We have to go once, go again. We have to do a lot of education. This costs a lot of money, um, you know, and, and, and you want to reach these people so that they can, you know, benefit. So that's mm. another challenge mm. we've mentioned. Is the transportation any a challenge? The transportation, I would say, is a challenge. Um, the exchange doesn't um, handle the transportation element. Okay. But you will find that a lot of members are saying, yes, can we, you know, get recommendations for transport companies? Are there more transport companies out there? Um, because 
there are a number of trucks, but they're doing um, haulage within Ghana. But you'll find that they're also going between the border countries to do, you know, delivery. So that really, it's a challenge, but it also presents an opportunity for business people who would want to look at venturing into that area. Now, what's your highest traded commodity? on the exchange right now maize mm. but it's again we started with maize and with every commodity that we bring in it takes a while for it to take off and for people to know that it's available that it's mm. available um once it's membership based so today you have us i don't know we have about 200 members um and some of those members are brokers and under the brokers they have what we call clients so mm. in some cases the member might be the farmer the farmer might be a trading member, so they trade directly for themselves, but a broker can trade for themselves or on behalf of someone mm, else. Mm. So some farmers may not want to, you know, do the business of trading, they'll go through a broker. Um, so a broker might have, you know, several clients who are farmers. Some of the brokers we have on board are also what we call farmer-based organizations. So under one farmer-based organization, um, depending on the size, you can have, you know, 100 farmers, 1,000 farmers, 10,000 farmers. So there are different types of uh, members we have. So indirectly and sometimes directly, we're able to reach, you know, thousands of farmers. We've done a lot of training, a lot of capacity building. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, it, it really, really ranges. But for every, you know, you started today, you have members who are coming to trade maize. Mm. When mm. you bring on a new commodity, you, you have more members from that. New members. But the process of listing a new commodity is very extensive. Mm. The process of, you know, we are regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. So we cannot just say today, oh, we're bringing on another commodity. There's a whole mm, feasibility the study that it. has to be done. We hold market councils. We bring stakeholders from across the market together to bring their inputs um, on grading parameters. We work with the Ghana Standards Authority. There are many, many, many legs to you know to, to this thing. So for each commodity, it, it does take some time. You mentioned often uh, being a member. Mm -hmm. Is it expensive to become a member? No, it depends. I mean... It, it's relative, but it's not expensive. I think that the first year there is um, a membership fee and then subsequent years it's reduced by 50% and depending mm. on the type of member you mm. are. So mm. I think if you're a trading member, I think it's 1250 mm. for mm. the year and then mm. in subsequent years it's half of that. Okay. But, you know, if you want to quote me, maybe let me check. <laughs> me check. I, have so very, I have a very strong membership department. They can give you, you know, these figures off, off the back of their heads but okay. um, if you go online www.gcx.com.gh um, you will find all of this information is there. Mm. but what i see is that as you sustain your membership the cost of being a member reduces yes. as time goes on oh, interesting what what opportunities are there for uh, people who want to work with the gcx i see there was some haulage opportunity also uh, can people provide warehouses since you don't have enough? Yes, we, we do sometimes partner with private sector. So mm. if you have a warehouse in a producing area, so it has to be somewhere near okay, the production, the production yes, okay, the okay. Sites, then you can, you know... Where are your production areas? No, I mean, it is the commodity. So okay. it maize, that's why we're in the Bronga, Hafo, Ashanti, Northern mm. region. So wherever, whichever commodity we're listing is then we need a warehouse. So let's mm -hmm. say rice, for instance, we've literally just, um, you know, recently listed rice, but we don't yet have a warehouse in the Volta region. And mm. we know that the Volta region is, you know, one so of the rice producers. producers. Not the region also. Yes. If you have a warehouse in an area which is close to like rice farms, you can approach yeah. us and say, look, I have a warehouse. It's empty or it's not being used. Are you interested in partnering? So we look at, you know, sometimes we lease out um, private warehouses or we can mm. look at partnership arrangements. Mm. Um, where we work, you know, um, we, we find, yeah, so that that's an uh, opportunity. You talked about transport again, we do not do transportation, mm. but buyers need um, haulage companies to work with. To, to so bring, if okay. there are good, reputable companies, we do recommend them. And so, so these are easy ways to, for example, if I'm a farmer, large scale farmer, um, I can just transfer the problem of storage onto the GCX instead of worrying about it. I just no because we don't. Oh, storage. Yes. yes. Storage, so I just come to you. I yes. upload my product. Uh, you give me a receipt. I mean, if I go through the right process, get a membership, I just give you the product, and I don't have to worry about storing it. Would I be charged? Yes. Okay. 
okay yes so, is that what so, the membership fee helps cover no so um as a member you pay one time or you know one off yearly membership fees apart from that we have two sets of fees so when mm. you store your goods there's a storage fee mm -hmm. and when you trade your goods there's a trading fee right um, um and this is really how the exchange generates yeah it has, know, it has. revenue to be able to support the activities of the market but the storage fees are actually very competitive so they are you pay less when you store with the exchange than the going market rate. Mm, and this mm. is because we really want to see how we can provide a positive intervention to mm, farmers in Ghana. Mm. So it's highly subsidized. Apart because I was that, wondering, I mean, if what was the advantage there if it's going to cost yeah, more? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it costs less and we, we've done a lot of benchmarking. Even now we're doing another exercise to see if the pricing in the markets is still... Because we really want to be able to provide this um, okay. you know, support so, to farmers. So you're also being competitive. And not just that, it's probably one of the few places where you will... You know, you are guaranteed that the warehouses are actually insured and the commodities are insured. Mm, you can store mm, them elsewhere, mm. maybe even in your own home. There's no insurance. Yeah. On that. You and know, anyone can come and steal it <laughs> and your commodities yeah, yeah in this case should there be any disaster we guarantee the the, the commodities. and it happens often even natural disasters. natural disasters i know in the northern region for example they used to have a lot of fire outbreaks mm. in even rice farms okay. which used to cause uh, a lot of loss um we're going to come back to to this shortly if you're just joining us you're watching mx24 this is spotlight we're discussing the workings of the Ghana Commodity Exchange and exactly what goes on behind the name and the activities that go into ensuring that the entity runs as it should. We are speaking with the Chief Executive Officer, who is Mrs. Tucci Aovi. We'll be back after the break. Texan while driving is insane, and you're calling for a video call. But why you they do long? Just seconds, keke. I be you know that that. Eh? Spoil me with some fine sense. Babe, are you okay? What just happened, babe? Babe, babe are you okay? What just happened? This Mother's Day, celebrate your mother by sharing that one piece of advice that'll always stay with you. No matter where I find myself, I always keep remembering that my mom will say, it's better to please God than to please man. Mama will say, always look out for an intelligent man to marry and not somebody who is rich, because eventually your children must be intelligent and the riches can follow. Post or tweet in a video or photo the advice she gave you and add the hashtag Mama Would Say. Remember to tag at MX24GH on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook for a chance to win amazing prizes for your mom on Mother's Day. Your videos will also be featured on our special Mother's Day broadcast right here on MX24. Celebrities should be able to understand that political seasons come and go. If a woman is running for a CEO or a COO something and then she's not married, then mm. oh, this Special woman is going to be rude. Politics is 
the act of I mean, decision making. You go to school and you learn a bunch of stuff that really you don't end up using. So then what's the purpose? The quantum of graduates coming out of school uh -huh. every year, uh -huh. they realize that the job is inadequate. Welcome back to Spotlight. My name is Nuong Falong. Thank you for staying with us. Before the break, we're speaking with the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Commodity Exchange, Mrs. Tsuchi Yuvowi. And we're discussing the operations of the Ghana Commodity Exchange. Before we went on the break, she was giving us a lot of insight. And we're just going to continue with that and look at the future outlook of the entity. Madam. Sorry about that short break. Okay. <laughs> what what is what's in the future for the GCX? Yes, it's a new entity. Um, it has some challenges. It's not at optimum output yet. But how do we get there? We keep doing what we're doing first. Um, we keep the you know steady rollouts. Um, we we believe in that so much because. Every single commodity is different, different characteristics, the market actors, I mean, they, they, everything, you know, they all perform very differently. So if we want to bring on, um, you know, a new commodity and want to treat it like those we've already brought on, we may fail. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep doing this slow, steady approach. We will keep on involving market actors at every single stage, um, you know, of, 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 our, of mm -hmm. our development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are just, as I was saying before, one leg in a whole value chain. So we need to work with all the other, um, you know, organizations and market mm -hmm. actors um, and, and, and make sure that we're working together in a common, you know, direction for a common goal. We have started, I mentioned earlier, with agricultural commodities and we started with grains. We're currently in the phase of trying to introduce cash crops. Once we've been able to do that, we will start to look at other commodities like metals, um, like minerals, somewhere down the future. Mm, mm, and these, mm. you know, these are, minerals, these are huh? commodities, these are physical commodities we're talking about. So these are different types of contracts. Again, much later down the line, we'll be looking at things like, you know, forwards, futures contracts, depending on the commodity that you, you, you list, spot contracts, which means you're buying for immediate mm -hmm. delivery, may not be the right type of contract. It may be better served by a futures contract. Um, and then at some point, um, we'll be looking at things like derivatives. So there really is a very okay. long term okay. plan. Okay. That's and we're working on this in a very, very phased um, Is there a specific approach. policy direction? This is the policy direction. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, we're working in line, let's say globally with um, government policy. So okay. if you look at, you know, the commodities I've mentioned, where we started with grains and earlier on we talked about the planting for food and jobs program, mm -hmm. there were some mm -hmm. commodities mm -hmm. that were priority first. So as we improve the quality, increase the quantity, the yield of those commodities, we help to provide access to markets. Mm. Planting for food and jobs now, we've also moved into another phase of planting for exports and rural development. Mm, um, mm, there's mm. been the establishment of the Tree Crops Development Authority. Okay, so you see there's okay. a focus on mm. tree crops and we've come in as well to make sure that we can also provide, uh, you know, uh, the, the, let's say a different kind of service that can support that part of the value chain when we talk about access to markets, mm. uh, especially international markets for exports. Um, and so this is yeah a really gradual yeah. increase mm -hmm. in the commodity base, a gradual improvement, and solution to all the issues. So, well, at least some of them. We know you work with the Ministry of Trade, Ministry of Agriculture. How can they help better? How can they improve? what is going on here okay. at the exchange? I think some of the things that we're starting to do now, um, we're forming committees. So um, for tree crops, for instance, we're just in the process of establishing a tree crops um, committee, that's GCX. So you have the Tree Crops Development Authority. 
we're looking for a representative from there to join um, the GCX Tree Crops Committee, someone from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, somebody from, you know, Cashew Alliance um, industry, so that we really work together and look at the different gaps and how together the different mm. bodies can, mm. you know, solve mm. the challenges. So these are some of the ways encouraging um, the different organizations to work together, to collaborate, so that it's not, um, you know, everybody working in a void, mm. you're not going to mm. see mm. The, the results. But if we come together and make sure that the value chain is really um, pieced together nicely it's one ecosystem is is the collaboration very cohesive right now it's cohesive it could be better mm. i say it could be better because we're all doing so many things um i think one way it could even be a very simple way it could be made better is just in the way we communicate because people don't understand that these um let's say these programs are all linked. Mm. So today I've told you how, we, where we come in to the value chain. You know, if you take a product like Cashew after that, you've got the Ghana Export Promotion Authority who is now assisting on the export side of things. Mm. Mm. All of the programs are linked, but a lot of people don't know that. So it looks like, oh, we have planting for food and jobs, we have this, we have, no, it's actually a huge program which is going to be highly beneficial for the country. And I think the more people are aware of how the different um, programs are coming together, the more, you know, just the general public can even support in different ways, getting involved, um, you know, in, in, in different parts of the We've process. spoken a lot about uh, ways in which they can get involved, uh, the uh, transportation, storage, um, uh, farming, mm -hmm. which is very key. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also spoke about a bit of technology, but you handle most of the technology in-house. We work with um, external providers. Okay. Yes, we, okay. we, we handle, let's say, the trading operations mm -hmm. um, because it's we, we have to do that. But I mean, we work with a lot of um, partners to look at how we can provide other solutions. So, yeah, no, there are many opportunities. So the technological uh, opportunities for people who are home and watching? Yes, mm -hmm. we get approached a lot. We've received a lot of proposals. We have um, different, we form different partnerships. We have MOUs with a lot of Ghanaian companies, you know, who are doing amazing things. In the so you're, you're open world. to receiving these Extremely proposals? Extremely open, um, not only to receiving proposals, but we encourage people to walk into our offices, um, come understand what we do and discuss opportunities. It's something so new and we recognize that, you know, we, we need to share more. We're happy to educate. Um, and you'll find, I mean, you've been in here now for, you know, a few minutes, but you'll see that, you know, you can walk up and down the staff. Everyone is happy to receive visitors. You can ask any member of staff about what the Ghana Commodity Exchange does. They'll happily share that with you. Um, so, yeah, we're a very open organization. How, how do you improve on your farmers and their yield? For example, we don't. you don't we in don't, any it, way. What, what I was um, sharing earlier was that that's production mm. and that's being handled wonderfully through this uh, PFJ program. Uh, Ministry of Agri. Yes. Yeah. They're giving seeds, the fertilizer, things that mm. are helping to improve mm. the quality mm. and improve the yield. Once now they have this, you know, higher quality and, you know, commodity in excess, let's say, mm -hmm. bumper harvest that we've mm -hmm. seen in the mm -hmm. past through PFJ, then we come in to provide access to markets. Mm -hmm. But we first store the commodity and preserve the quality mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, stop mm -hmm. it from going to waste um, in terms of post harvest also. So we have our own role to play. Yeah. yeah. Essentially, you actually are, but your one of your stakeholders is doing it yes. yeah, on, yes. on your behalf. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Tucci. Do you have any closing remarks? No, I mean, I think just what I was saying is that we are really open. We encourage you to come. If you have questions about GCX, come. Sometimes we take field trips together. We're happy to go um, to see some of the farmers on the field. We mm. go together to our warehouse, see how the operations work. Um, we've invited and we've received many students. They've come. Um, from the different universities, um, starting here in Accra, University of Ghana, Ashesi, so many have come mm -hmm. um, to mm -hmm. come and learn about the exchange, understand the operations. In fact, we've had you know, recently. We, we we did a program. Um, we partnered with um, Agri House. They did a program okay. for students, Agri students. So they brought Agri students from all across the country. Um, they came here, spent uh, half a day with us, okay. understanding the operations, looking at opportunities. So we really are open. Um, there isn't a type 
of person that works with the exchange. We work with people across the, the, the spectrum of agriculture and business. So mm, mm, we're here, mm. we're open and, and really ready to work with anyone who's interested in what we do and how we can you know, further the agricultural economy of Ghana together. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Tucci Ivoi. She's a Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Commodity Exchange. We hope at the end of this conversation, we have been able to contribute to your knowledge of the workings and the activities that go on within this particular entity. If you have more questions, of course, we'll be here to answer them. Thank you for spending one hour of your evening with us. My name is Nuong Falong. Stay with us on MX24 for more fun, fearless and factual content. Good evening. This Mother's Day, celebrate your mother by sharing that one piece of advice that'll always stay with you. No matter where I find myself, I always keep remembering that my mom will say, it's better to please God than to please man. Mama will say, always look out for an intelligent man to marry and not somebody who is rich, because eventually your children must be intelligent and the riches can follow. Post or tweet in a video or photo the advice she gave you and add the hashtag Mama Would Say. Remember to tag at MX24GH on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook for a chance to win amazing prizes for your mom on Mother's Day. Your videos will also be featured on our special Mother's Day broadcast right here on MX24. Celebrities should be able to understand that political seasons come and go. If a woman is running for a CEO or a COO something and then she's not married and mm. oh, this Special woman is going to be rude. Politics is the act of I mean, decision making. You go to school and you learn a bunch of stuff that really you don't end up using. So then what's the purpose? The quantum of graduates coming out of school uh -huh. every year. Uh -huh. They realize that the job is inadequate. <laughs> Miss Drew, your house is the most. I'll see you in the next moment. my people welcome to x a boy's body count and a girl's body count matter differently <laughs> wow. 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 it's mostly an experience something yeah. that happened <laughs> is it a deal breaker in a relationship uh, no the x cave and this show focuses on topics that are hot on the lips of our young people and presents it in an open, honest conversation. Oh, look at him, he's crying, he's such a girl. In other words, there are no liars on our show. The man is the head of the home. The man is, um, quote unquote, the breadwinner. We come here with the truth. We talk of something being toxic, it's something which is harmful mm -hmm. or unpleasant. Stay glued to the television for the hottest show on TV.